All right, we're talking about archaeology. Uh, when, ar uh, when archaeologists dig, they use what they call a, an air. They focus on a particular area, and they divide up that area in what they call meter squares. And they can be of different uh, sizes, depending on what their goals are. However, they do take the form of a square, and that's what you see here. In between the squares, they leave uh, debris, which is called a balk, B-A-L-K, a balk. Any guess why they would leave this debris between the squares? Yeah, for dogs. See? <laughs> How are the dogs going to get across the site if you don't leave a pathway there? That's, uh, that's Anna's dog. She had two. Anna was the, um, the drafts person that drew the things, and she had two dogs for their own site. Uh, is there another reason you might leave some dirt there? I mean, it does make access to the different squares much easier for having to climb down and climb back up. So that's important. I'm not diminishing that, but I think there's another more scientific reason for leaving the balk. What's that? Prevent the weather from... Hmm. It probably would make it, well, I'm not sure if it would make it more stable, maybe. Right. Um, the best way to think of it is archaeology is by its very nature destructive. In other words, as you're digging down, you're destroying all of the evidence that's there. Like, for example, if we dug out this square and said, I forgot to look for something. Well, guess what? Too late. You've already excavated it all. And so you leave some extra there so you can go back and check, right? So even though I've excavated all this and I, was, I didn't think to look for this, I still have a little bit left there. I can go look there and see. It'll give me a, some, you know, it's just sort of extra you leave behind to check out certain things. That's, that's important. Also, it shows you the stratigraphy. It's just a process of deposition that when you lay something down, the oldest is on the bottom and the youngest is on the top. It's called the law of superposition. So if you come to my office and you say, I took a test, I need to get it back, and I say, well, when did you take it? And you say, well, I took it like three years ago. Well, then I'll look somewhere in the middle of the pile of stuff on my desk. Uh, if you say you took it, you know, yesterday, I'll look close to the top. See what I'm saying? It's, it's just oldest on the bottom, youngest on the top. And so it creates sort of a layer cake. And each layer represents a unit or a period of time, like pages in a book. And so you want to preserve that stratigraphy, and the bulk allows you to preserve it and see it even after you've excavated square. So it's a fascinating and important technique that archaeologists use. Uh, this is probably the best example of stratigraphy I've ever seen. Very rarely did you see this, but this is a temple somewhere in Syria, I think, or Lebanon, and you can see the different layers, destruction layers. Like, uh, But even this, you can see some layers are thicker in certain areas and thinner in, in the other, so it's not a perfectly flat layer usually, and they come and go through time. But anyway, they do tell us of different periods. You can see in this, di this diagram that each of those surfaces represent uh, a ground level at some time. And so you can see history if you know how to read it. So that's stratigraphy. This is a bulk at Zippori. And in this case, you can see the different layers. Not any occupation layers, but you can see how it's de developed over this Roman road. This is a bulk at Zippori. There I am. Since I'm trained in geology, I was measuring the section. You have uh, yarn there that you place to, to distinguish the different strata. And then you draw it as best you can. This is my drawing. And you do that during the day and at night they take it and they run it through a scanner and they produce these computer-generated images from the drawing, which makes it look much more scientific. Anyway, this is what I drew and this is what they gave me the next day that had been produced from my drawings and so on. 